I V M. जब मैं छोटी बच्ची थी सुनती थी ये पुरानी स्टोरी लड़की सावली नहीं चाहिए लड़की होनी चाहिए सिर्फ कोरी हल्दी बेसन मलाई की मालिश और फेयरनेस क्रीम्स इन्हें बस चेहरे पे लगा लो पूरे हो जाएंगे तुम्हारे सारे ड्रीम्स हर रंग खूबसूरत है बंद करो ये कहानी आई एम जस्ट डन जॉइनिंग मी इन द स्टूडियो इज दैट देसी फेमिनिस्ट चंदना हिरानी हाय चंदना हाउ आर यू डूइंग Hi Almas I'm really I'm really good and thank you so much for having me here I'm really really excited Well it is my pleasure thank you for joining us on this show this is your host in those cell and uh, this is uh, beyond cliche here we discuss stories of people that have really broken stereotypes and moved beyond cliche for the listeners that have joined us on this show let me introduce chandana hiran to you i have with me a ca student who is uh, an activist feminist change maker she is an advocate of body positivity and she is someone that's run successful petitions uh, on misogyny and body positivity she is also a fellow change maker and she is also one of the stories in my upcoming book change dot makers i am super duper excited for this conversation with chandana hiran before we start this conversation a little bit about a petition that i am that i am currently running on change dot org i am asking a leading diaper company to get the father's picture on the wrapper of the diapers i think it, it's it's high time we send the message out on equal parenting so if you really believe in this cause please go to www.change.org/papapampers2 coming back to the guest uh, in the studio that we have today this virtual studio with me almas i have chandana so chandana is someone that actually gave about 20 interviews in 3 days with a lot of newspapers radio channels tv shows um both nationally and internationally including participating in a documentary on bbc recently um and all of this was to do with a petition um that that got her in in the news and this was about a fairness cream dropping the word fair in their product so we're going to explore all of this i'm really excited chandana hindi mein aapke naam ka matlab hai sandalwood i know it has a couple of meanings उसका एक मतलब है सैंडलवुड एंड यू नो सैंडलवुड इज यूजली एसोसिएटेड विद ब्यूटी एंड हाउ आइरोनिकल इट इज दैट यू स्ट्रगल्ड विद द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ब्यूटी मोस्ट ऑफ योर चाइल्डहुड एंड टीनेज लाइफ सो टेल अस मोर अबाउट योर स्टोरी इन फैक्ट नॉट जस्ट द नेम चंदना सो माय पेट नेम एट होम इज लवली आई एम कॉल्ड लवली ओके यू आर लवली चंदना इन एवरीवे <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much so yeah it has been a pretty funny coincidence right so what was your story tell us what was the story of struggle with uh, your skin color or the the concept of beauty relating to your own identity right so i think all my life i've felt uh, underconfident and i've felt insecure in my own skin because mm-hmm. of these fairness cream commercials and Hollywood movies and advertisements going mm-hmm. all, um, you know, only fair is lovely. Presenting an idea to us that you can only be successful in life if you're fair skinned. Mm-hmm. And being a dark skin girl, being a brown skin girl in a country mm-hmm. like India, I felt like uh, I maybe I don't deserve those things in life. Maybe mm-hmm. I am inferior, right. and hence I became really underconfident and reserved. I mm-hmm. would not speak up. I would. um you know not put my opinions forward and i think that is something that all girls uh, who are dark skinned in this country have faced it's not just me alone the fact that my petition mm-hmm. garnered so many signatures so quickly and people related to it so much goes to say that this is something that the whole country was feeling and not just me absolutely and i want to give you a high five in this one because i struggled with the with the same you know bias while i was growing up and uh, yeah. for some reason the neighborhood aunties were more interested in who would get married to me when i grow up you know more yeah. than my own family so uh, what kind I of experiences know. did you have while you were growing up 
so many and i think uh, they they're still going on those experiences don't stop they never stop they'll haunt you all your life so right. i have random aunties telling me to put haldi besan on my face suggesting right. me homemade recipes that will make me fair somehow trying to tell me that i'm not okay the way i am right now right. so they want me to be fair or you know them suggesting that don't go out in the sun you will get more tan and right. you know so that don't drink chai or coffee because it's sirang or samla ho jayega <laughs> yeah i've heard so that many, one before <laughs> yeah. yeah so many things don't don't wear this don't do that you know why can't i just be myself why can't right. i just wear whatever i want to be out in the sun for how how much ever time i want to and right. just right. live my life why is this aspect of me so important mm-hmm. i don't understand right 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 so you know it's such a big cliche and i don't think it is just restricted to india you know internationally this is a, a big thing challenge that there's just so much conversation on racism colorism that we talk about right um so Absolutely. where 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 all do you see the stereotype being portrayed where around us do we see it um we see it in bollywood movies when they show these stereotypes that people who are dark skinned are shown to be dull and reserved and you know their personalities mm-hmm. are stereotyped in a certain way and people right. who are fair skinned are shown to be bubbly and cheerful there right. are certain movies that very blatantly demean dark skinned people so one girl is shown to be so in the entire movie this dark skinned girl is shamed for being her skin color right. and she right. has a face mask on her face all throughout the movie oh, and oh, okay being a brown skin girl i'll be so horrified looking at that that you right. know is this what i'm supposed to do is this what i'm supposed to feel right and it's there in uh, matrimonial advertisements where they very blatantly say that you know we only want fair skin brides and mm. we want them to mm. be a certain way mm. and oh yes you know, all those matrimonial ads they will say looking for fair whatever whatever fair is like yeah. the first word there in every yeah, matrimonial ad yeah it's like everywhere right right in every right. ad and uh, if you see the tv news anchors they all look a certain way especially the female ones they uh-huh. they'll all be fair skin they all have these sharp european features with straight hair i mean mm-hmm. where is the representation in india being a country you know which has people of all cultures all ethnicities all kinds of backgrounds why is only one type of person being represented in media i think media has a huge role to play uh even even in tv st- even in um kids shows tv shows and mm-hmm. you know the stories that we've seen the disney movies uh the mm-hmm. idealization of snow white in right. fact uh it's not just uh snow white even if you'll see in the indian context in the depiction of mythological characters if you'll see krishna and draupadi they're mm-hmm. supposed to be dark skin people krishna mm-hmm. the word means dark in sanskrit so why is he shown to be a fair skin character fair skin man Mm-hmm. every time so i've i've actually done research oh on yes this oh yes you're right yeah since, yeah since years and years and years uh for the role of krishna a fair skin man has been cast there's not a single dark skin man who has been cast for the role of krishna and why is that why are we so obsessed with the idea of a fair skin hero mm. so are you trying to tell me that this whole obsession with fair skin is not restricted just to one gender it also has an impact on a man who probably is dark skin because you've worked so Absolutely. extensively in this space what kind of feedback do you get from both men and women on this subject i think uh, so it has a role to play for both genders i think mm-hmm. both genders are shamed when it comes to skin color but definitely women have to face it more because of mm-hmm. the, because of the sexual objectification that women have to face there's mm-hmm. obviously more pressure on women to uh, look and be a certain way so because mm-hmm. of that the pressure that they face is more but having said that it's not like men don't face it so uh, i had run a random instagram poll uh, mm-hmm. on my page and mm-hmm. i just asked people a simple question that you know have you ever been body shamed it was just a yes or no poll and you will not mm-hmm. believe almas i think more than 250 people answered that poll mm-hmm. and 90% of them chose yes 90% 90% so mm-hmm. uh, this is a huge problem and i think mm-hmm. we're not addressing it enough 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. Though people are beginning to speak up and we see some movies around this subject, um, but there's still a long way to go. I think it's just a norm, right? That you're expected mm-hmm. to be fair, that that's really like a norm and look beautiful. And that's where the cosmetic industry is also making millions and millions just out Absolutely. of making, feel, uh, making people feel pathetic about themselves. So That's how they're thriving. By right. selling insecurities to people. Right, right, right. You know, oh, I always kind of also talk about the way toys are sold to children. And if you look at yeah. the, the Barbie dolls, they're just picture perfect. I mean, who looks like that? You're talking about perfect right. figures and, and great hair and fair skin and just beautiful in the way they are. In in the society's definition of beautiful, you know, society has sort of created a picture of beautiful. Right. Um, so I'm in conversation with Chandana Hiran. She is an advocate of body positivity. Uh, she's a change maker who's run uh, quite a few successful campaigns. And we're going to talk about her journey as a petitioner and a change maker right after the short break. You're on Beyond Cliche with Almas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Been a really fun week on the network. Please do definitely check out all the regular shows that you do. But in addition, let me give you a few recommendations. On Agla Station Adulthood, Ritasha and Ayushi talk siblings. Really fun episode. I think you'll enjoy that. Nishad Pai Vaidya is on Cyrus and they discuss uh, hey, cricket and a lot of different things around cricket. I think you'll enjoy that as well. Old friend Parmesh Shahani, he was on Absolutely Right. Definitely do check that out. Tamal Mills was on Edges and Sledges, another episode which I've heard really good things about. I haven't heard it yet. I need to listen to that soon. And guys, Uncle Please Sit, definitely listen to that. They've been killing it. This week they have Abby Phillips, he's Dr talking about medical misinformation. Last week, Paramita Vora was talking about sex education and who needs it. They've been really coming. You definitely do check that out. And with that, let me get you back to your show. Hello and uh, welcome back to Beyond Cliche. This is your host in those now. I am a speaker, author, coach, change maker. And uh, um, I, I actually talk about stories, powerful stories. I bring in guests and discover their stories around gender stereotyping. Today on my show, I have a very special guest. This is a 23-year-old advocate of body positivity who ran uh, a campaign on misogyny about a year ago. And uh, she asked a leading award function curator to to make a statement uh, that they did not really support misogyny in Bollywood. So she's done a lot of work in misogyny and, and now she's also a crusader who sort of picked up this cause in body positivity and she's working on that. So tell us about misogyny and uh, the stereotypes around it, Jan. Um, So misogyny basically is the practice of hating women. Misogyny means uh, hating women. Oh, that's what it means, is it? Yes, yes. And uh, misogyny plays out in various forms in society. Mm -hmm. And one of the forms is sexual objectification. When you blatantly objectify women as um, sexual objects and, you know, they're not given any kind of um, Mm -hmm. personality or autonomy and they're just projected as objects of desire so if you've heard mm-hmm. these item numbers in Bollywood and mm-hmm. they're even called item numbers so they very blatantly demean women and so my petition was against that my petition was for IFA which is the awards function to make a statement against objectification in Bollywood songs mm-hmm. and it's not just objectification but also the glorification of harassment and stalking which is very problematic in these mm-hmm. Bollywood songs mm-hmm. So if you've heard of that song, which goes like, Khali peeli rokne ka nahi, tera peecha karun to rokne ka nahi, hai tuj pe right mera, tu hai delight mera. Mm-hmm. Will you believe mm-hmm. this is a song of this decade? And mm-hmm. this is not like some, this is not a song of some B-grade movie that does not have, you know, TRPs and mm-hmm. probably will not impact people in our mm-hmm. society. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a popular song by one of the biggest stars in our country. Mm-hmm. And um, I think songs like the, these and content like this has a lot of impact. And mm-hmm. I think it's re- really problematic when you're teaching this kind of content and you're saying that, hey, it's okay to, you know, harass a girl and stalk her. And, uh, you know, in the end, you, she's mm-hmm. still going to fall, into love, fall in love with you. Right, so, right. Yeah, my campaign was one full-fledged one-year campaign 
where mm-hmm. I've called out many, many problematic Bollywood songs. And mm-hmm. a lot of people even came forward and said that, oh my God, yeah, we didn't even realize that we were consuming this content. Absolutely. And how problem- right. We're dancing to these songs uh, all the time, right? Yeah. Uh, so and we don't even realize that the lyrics are so problematic. Yeah, so I'll give you a few examples that objectify women. These item numbers, tandoori, murgi. Women are like compared to anything and everything. Tandoori, murgi, chikni, chameli, mm-hmm. Afghan, jalebi. What oh is Afghan God. jalebi? What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, uh, And you know, kaddu katega to sab mein batega, which mm-hmm. I think is the worst song on earth. Yeah. Uh, not just the lyrics, but even the the visual whatever of that song is so horrible. Mm-hmm. And... um just so many songs. Khamba, Chhadi, Botal, Kaddu. Kuch bachai nahi hai. Just say, mm-hmm. humne compare nahi kya hai aur tum ko. Mm-hmm. And they're right in your mm-hmm. face. It's just that it takes someone like you to sort of pay attention to this. I, I, I just hope yeah. that all of us are a little more conscious of what we're consuming, like you rightly said. Is there an right. element of colorism mm-hmm. being portrayed in some of these songs as well? Have you noticed that? Absolutely, absolutely. So the Bollywood movies have been propagating this idea of fairness, right? Since forever. Mm-hmm. Chittiya Kalaiya. Uh-huh, right, 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 right. So many songs. Gori, 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 Gori. That uh-huh, song right, 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 with right, Shah Rukh right. Khan in it. Right. And Gori Chahre Pe Na Itna Gumar Kar Wo Ek Dham Purana Wala Gana. So, so we are actually saying Gora Chahra and Guman. So we're talking about pride along with skin color, right. fair skin color. So it's, it's, it's sort of right. just propagating that whole idea that if you're, you're fair, you can carry yourself with Absolutely. pride and you have pride. Absolutely. So, so I, I kind of want to understand, you know, while you were on this journey, whether it was in the misogynistic uh, journey of yours or when you sort of started this other petition um, around uh, skin color, you had a lot of people reaching out to you, right? In fact, there was this article that came out in Humans of Bombay, which was one of your first formal articles where you sort of got your story out of the closet. And you had a lot of people reaching out to you. What were people trying to tell you? I'm sure there are a lot of listeners that are resonating with what what you're saying. What were some experiences that people shared? Right. Uh, so Humans of Bombay is still date. Uh, the day that that happened, it's still the best day of my life because mm-hmm. it was so, so overwhelming the number of messages and the amount of love I got that day for keeping my story out because obviously it was a vulnerable moment for me to uh, go out in the world and say that, hey, you know, this is what has happened with me. This is my story. These are my weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And it's not easy to do that. It's not always easy to, right. um, you know, put your story out like that. But when I did that, so many girls came to me in my DM messaging me that, hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. This is our story. We have gone through this. And thank you so much for speaking up because now we see hope. We see, you know, we feel confident that if you can do something like this, if you can go through something like this and still be what you are, then even we can be that. The number of messages Mm -hmm. that I received that day were so, so overwhelming. And I think it's been the greatest day of my life because this is what I want to do. This is what I've always wanted to do. Beautiful. Um, How beautiful is that? In fact, the listeners, uh, if you're resonating with this, do drop your story in the comments. Do reach out to us. Let us know what your story is. How do you connect with this subject? Uh, Chandana, but the, the larger question here is when you've been sort of sometimes even humiliated, made to feel inferior, etc. as you're growing up, you you have your own set of scars, right? And this is just Absolutely. because of the skin color that you have. How does one go about embracing themselves? It has been really difficult. In fact, this process of embracing and learning and unlearning is so difficult mm-hmm. because it takes a lot of effort and time to actually start seeing value in yourself because these narratives are so toxic. They completely break you. Um, right. My confidence has been absolutely shattered but not just because of what we see in media but also because of the people around me because everybody learns right the Mm. people in my school also learn these things and Mm. hence they body Mm. shame me Mm. and the relatives everybody around me so I felt like I am nobody I Mm. didn't have any Mm. kind of confidence So the only time that I started coming out of this and started seeing value in myself was Mm -hmm. when I actually started campaigning and I started putting my opinions forward. And, you know, I just took that leap of believing in myself. 
So when I think I started uh, building confidence through my thoughts and through my actions. And I started mm-hmm. deriving confidence out of that, and I think that made a huge change in my life. I no longer derive confidence out of my appearances or out of what some random auntie is thinking of my skin color or what some boy is thinking of my size. Mm-hmm. I'm deriving confidence out of what I'm doing in life and how much I'm willing to do for the people around me. And yeah, that is what I urge everyone to do: to derive mm-hmm. confidence out of who they are and. not what others perceive them to be mm-hmm, mm-hmm. definitely it, it is just not that easy like you said you know and uh, sometimes it the universe pushes you in a direction and you sort of move along and then you realize oh my god there is a, a shadow that i need to embrace and and there's a light that i can spread out to the world and that's something that happened to you in this program where we met together right? so we met at this program yeah. called she creates change uh, by change.org and there was a turning point in chandana's life during the program in fact uh, we've sort of mentioned that in the book as well and it's out you'll be able to read it but uh, clearly there you identified that you had a story and you also had a voice right and since then yeah. chandana has been kind of persistent in her work campaigning stuff whether it is through instagram she has she has a handle that she's very very consistent uh, with and and uh, then you sort of launched uh, campaign after campaign so tell us about this recent campaign that made the waves you know where, where you sort of hit the waves and uh, you got covered in so right. many newspapers and also featured on um, india today uh, cnbc bbc you know, newspapers like times and indian express etc featured you you also appeared on on radio shows internationally so what was this campaign about can you tell us right so uh, my initial idea for a campaign was to do something on skin color because this is something that has deeply affected me and right. it has a personal story but at that time i thought that maybe it's not such a good idea because this is a company that is thriving on selling insecurities to people mm-hmm. so why will it go ahead and you know hurt its profits so mm-hmm. at that time i put that idea on hold but mm-hmm. now when the black lives matter movement happened and a lot of people started talking about it and there was this whole wave of awareness against racism and mm-hmm. you know people started questioning the hypocrisy of indian celebrities who endorse these fairness creams and mm-hmm. these fairness creams are basically like we're selling racism in a tube mm-hmm. so i thought that okay if i want to do this then now is the right time now is that time uh, you know to create that additional pressure for unilever to mm-hmm. take action on this because mm-hmm. fair and lovely as a brand had been hurting the sentiments of women for decades Mm. by presenting a narrative that you know you cannot be successful in life unless you're fair skinned mm. and no mm. it, it doesn't matter how talented you are or how intelligent mm. you are or how mm. dedicated you are despite all of that if you want success in life if you want to get married if you don't want your parents to be ashamed of you you will have to be fair skinned Mm-hmm. and so i think i just saw it as the right opportunity and i started that petition and mm-hmm. within 2 weeks that petition garnered more than 12000 signatures mm-hmm. and unilever even decided to drop the term fair from fair mm-hmm. and lovely mm-hmm. and after that all these interviews happened and i've mm-hmm. still kept the petition open because we still want fair and lovely to take better steps towards being more inclusive so right now they've said right. that they're going to be more inclusive and they're going to uh, you know bring more diversity into the brand right. but we're still waiting to see that so right now right. Uh, about 34000 people have signed this petition amazing and uh, you know from what i read uh, the company is also looking at uh, how can they change the narrative and they've acknowledged that these old narratives don't work anymore so some great right. stuff there chandana uh, chandana you're also writing a graphic book can you tell me more about it writing or creating a book what is it that you're doing it's called day and chandana will tell us more <laughs> about it Yeah so graphy is basically an app wherein you can create content in whatever field that you have specialization in mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i decided to go ahead with body positivity and i'm creating content on body positivity on this app called graphy mm-hmm. and uh, my graphy is called a day with your day so day is a sanskrit word that means body and ah, so, so it's a, it's a because, day with your body a day with day yeah a day with day. Day. Yeah. okay tell us yeah. more So when I was doing this campaign called Hashtag All Shades Are Lovely, which was for fair and lovely to change its narrative and to stop demeaning dark skin women, I realized uh, 
how deeply impacted people around me and me myself are because of these narratives that go around in society mm-hmm. and how we've created this one unrealistic idea of beauty like you mentioned a barbie doll we mm-hmm. all want to be that way no mm-hmm. matter what culture we belong to what country what region you know what ethnicity we all want to become that like that one barbie girl and mm-hmm. which is so unrealistic and right. when i realized that i thought we need to have more conversations around this and so the graphic can be called digital art i guess um uh, so there are going to be, yeah there are going to be 10 chapters in it and i'll be broadly talking about everything that comes under body positivity i'll be talking about colorism i'll be talking about skinny shaming fat shaming uh one of the chapters is called bald and beautiful because mm-hmm. i think even baldness is an issue in our way it, it actually becomes Absolutely. an issue right, and right, right. i'll be talking about high discrimination and a lot of other things yeah 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 so yeah all of these are you know subjects we don't often talk about uh, because we are so consumed yeah. with so many other capitalist problems that we have but really uh, a yeah. human being's well being emotional well being really depends on how they feel about themselves and there's just so much work Absolutely. to be done in this space chandana you recently featured in a two day festival uh with bbc bbc cdx can you tell us more right. about it so uh, bbc for the first time had a virtual creative diversity festival of two days mm-hmm. which was um basically the theme of that festival was colorism and i actually got lucky to be on a panel of colorism wherein there were women who have been working in this space and one of them was beverly naya who actually has a netflix documentary called skin where she talks oh, about wow. colorism okay. Okay. Yeah, and it was a really amazing experience because uh, I got to learn these different perspectives of people from all over the world. Mm-hmm. And I think one really interesting thing I realized was that no matter what part of the world you belong to, our stories of colorism and the hurt that we've been through and you know the kind of narratives that go around are the same. Uh there's not a single difference between the story of me and between the story of some african american girl who has failed colorism who has faced colorism in her life right. and i could relate with them 100% so it was just really ironic that uh, you know the stories that are so deeply hurtful to us also unite us in so many ways what a lovely note to end this conversation the stories that deeply hurt us also unite us and one such story is the story of color uh, chandana hiran you're definitely adding all shades to this colorful story that you're creating for yourself and to a lot of people out there that struggled with this a lot of puns intended there thank you for joining me in today's conversation uh, chandana has got a very popular insta instagram handle uh, chandana can you tell us where all can we find you on the internet right so on instagram i am uh, that desi feminist but it is that underscore desi underscore feminist Mm-hmm. on twitter you can find me at chandana underscore hiran mm-hmm. and that is basically all the social media that i do <laughs> so <laughs> that's the places that i'm most active at okay and uh, tell us more about uh, your petition if you still need to sign it where do we go right so the petition is at www.change.org slash all shades are lovely Yes absolutely all shades are lovely and uh, mm-hmm. I'm so happy that uh, you know you could add so many shades to this conversation today this is Neha Mars so on Beyond Cliche please do listen to uh, this episode and tell us what you think tell us about your story you can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet i'm on instagram at almasbrani_1111 you could also find me on twitter at almasbrani11 i also have a facebook page with almasbrani and uh, you can uh, listen to this podcast on the IBM podcast app or wherever you listen to podcasts this is me alma signing off thank you chandana once again i'm going to be back so with another episode on gender stereotyping on the show beyond cliche tada take care stay safe bye bye how many times have you motivated yourself to improve your sleep or lose weight or be more productive how many times have you failed hi my name is ashtin doctor 
Tune into my show The Habit Coach podcast where we focus on creating small tiny habits to improve your life instead of those big impossible tasks. So make listening to me a habit every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com or on your favorite podcasting app. Advertising is dead. Yep, you heard me right. Advertising is dead. We're all in the content business now. Let's not call it news, TV, radio, etc., etc. It's all content, and we're in the middle of this weirdly exciting phase where all the borders and lines that have been drawn over decades has been swept away by this lovely thing called the internet. We're a show where we don't dwell on just the stuff that is now, but rather the wider stuff about advertising, media, content, and the whole goddamn circus surrounding it. Tune in every Tuesday for our weekly unboxing of the mystery box we used to call advertising. I'm Varun Dugirala, co-founder and content chief at The Glitch, and this is my new podcast, Advertising is Dead. <laughs> 